This video is made possible by donations to the United States Lighthouse Society from people like you. You are listening to Lighthearted, the official podcast of the United States Lighthouse Society. My name is Jeremy Dontremont. Welcome. My co-host today is Jeff Gales, Executive Director of the U.S. Lighthouse Society. Hey, Jeff. Hi, Jeremy. Thanks for having me on your program. You're very welcome. Nice to have you back again. It's been a while since we've done this. And uh, I'll just before I get into things more, I'll just mention that this is uh, September 25th. Uh, 2022. This is episode 192 of Lighthearted, and it's also your birthday, September 25th. Do I have that right? It is. It is but, my birthday. Well, happy birthday. Uh, and uh, I won't uh, ask you how old you are, although I know you're not nearly as old as I am. But uh, yeah, for everybody out there, our gifts are always accepted. <laughs> okay. That's gifts to the U.S. Lighthouse Society, of course. Oh, sir. yes, of course. Yes. Of course, he said uh, nud nudgingly. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. Okay. Uh, so in a few minutes, we're going to be hearing an interview about Valencia Island Lighthouse in Ireland, uh, an amazing place I visited during our U.S. Lighthouse Society tour in July. It is such a spectacular place. I, I would say it is right up there at the top of uh, the most beautiful lighthouse locations I've ever visited. So we're going to be talking about that with uh, Lucienne Horvat in a few minutes. Uh, it's getting into late September, and the busy lighthouse season season is kind of uh, winding down at this point, certainly in the, the Northeast, at least. Uh, here in uh, New Hampshire, I am, and throughout the Northeast, the lighthouses that are open to the public uh, usually close by sometime in October, uh, usually Columbus Day is the most common uh, closing time because the weather just gets too unpredictable after that. You don't know what the weather is going to do uh, here in New England in the fall and winter. Is that is it the same story in the Northwest and Washington where you are, Jeff? Do the lighthouses start closing down or, or not? You know, in the Great Lakes, they close down. Um, where we are on the West Coast, a lot of them stay open year round. Uh, it really has to do with volunteer help. So if they can get the volunteers to. Yeah. We work through the winter and great uh the weather wise we can do it but uh sometimes it's tough and i know that what we have here at, in washington um you know it's hard getting volunteers just to keep open during the spring and summer so yeah um, but weather wise we could do it if we wanted to but it's all based on volunteer help yeah yeah that's a big absolutely a big part of it too here uh, all over these days it's mm -hmm. hard to have enough uh, help to to keep the place open all year so uh jeff to shift gears here a little bit as we usually do at this point in the podcast i'm going to ask you if anything interesting has happened on this date in lighthouse history yes something did interesting happen in recent history on september 25th 2004 a replica of the roanoke marsh's lighthouse on the Outer Banks in North Carolina was dedicated and open to the public. The old uh, 1877 lighthouse, the original, was uh, lost in the 1950s during an attempt to move it on shore. Uh, and the town of Manteo had it reconstructed and the replica is now filled with exhibits, a Fresnel lens and uh, other artifacts. The lens actually dates back to the 1880s. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I believe that uh, lens was uh loaned by the coast guard to the group there it and was, right. yeah i know that there have been u.s lighthouse society tours to the outer banks and it probably will be again in the future right oh but yeah for sure that I mean, lighthouse if yeah the uh outer banks and lighthouses that's on everybody's bucket list absolutely mm -hmm. yeah no doubt about that so let's talk about our our featured interview today which is with lucien horvat uh, we'll explain why that's not exactly an Irish name that's uh, discussed in the interview, but uh, Lucien is the project manager for the Valencia Island Development Company in Ireland. Uh, one of the main projects he's been involved with has been the development of Valencia Island Lighthouse as a tourist attraction. And as I said, it's a spectacular place. Uh, I had the pleasure of uh, visiting and meeting Lucien when I was there at the U.S. Lighthouse Society tour in July. Have you been there, Jeff? Have you, you you've been to Ireland, right? No, I've never been to this particular lighthouse. Uh, okay. I think the inter the name of it's interesting, Valencia. You think it's more of a Spanish Spain. sounding Not name, yeah, but um, 
No, I've never been there, but I've always wanted to go. Yeah. We discussed the origin of the name too. It has nothing to do with Valencia, Spain. It's a, it comes from the Irish language. It's a okay. little convoluted, but uh, no, no, no relation to Valencia, Spain, but just okay. a, an incredible place. So uh, the, uh, and we'll just mention maybe a little bit more about the U.S. Lighthouse Society tours. As I said, I was on the Ireland tour uh, in July. Uh, there are, have been quite a few tours over the years, U.S. Lighthouse Society to Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, etc. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't know if there's, I don't think there's anything scheduled for that part of the world next year, but I'm sure yeah. within a- so, uh, Basically what we just did was the ultimate Ireland tour. I mean, it was a long trip. It covered a yeah. lot of territory. The, la uh, the last tour I was on in Ireland was to the Northern part of the country, to Northern Ireland that focused down on the Northern area. So that was inter interesting too. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Ireland's a beautiful country, even, you know, not just lighthouses, it's just beautiful. The people yep. are beautiful, the culture, the music, everything is amazing. We saw on the Ultimate Island Tour, we went from uh, the Southwest coast all the way around uh, to Belfast and up to, I mean, I, I mean, I'm sorry, all the way around to Dublin and up to Belfast and in other places in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh, so we saw most of the entire coast, except for some of the Northwest. So it was- Yeah, so there's pretty, you had some overlap, but- yeah. Uh, yeah. We definitely, uh, it's definitely a place that people should go and visit, if not just for the lighthouses, for the culture, for the music, for the beautiful landscape, for the history. For the so, Guinness. And for the Guinness, yes. Yeah, yeah, I agree with all, all of the above. So let's uh, tell our uh, listeners a little bit more about Valencia Island Lighthouse and today's guest, if you could help me out, Jeff. Sure, Valencia Island is on the southwest coast of Ireland. Uh, it's in the southwest part of County Kerry. I always think that's great how they say County Kerry instead of Kerry County. Yep. But anyways, uh, the island's name does not come from the Spanish city of Valencia. It comes from an Irish phrase meaning harbor mouth of the island. Uh, so Valencia Island, about seven miles long by two miles wide, has a population of less than 700 and is connected to the mainland by a bridge. Yeah, uh, the island's lighthouse uh, began service in February 1841. It was built on the grounds of a 17th century fort at Cromwell Point, and actually it is uh, officially referred to as Cromwell Point Lighthouse. The stone tower stands 49 feet tall. The adjacent keeper's house is a concrete building constructed in 1910. Valencia Island's last lightkeeper, Henry Staniforth and his family were the last residents of the station. They left when the lighthouse was automated in 1947. Right, and the house is now fully uh, restored as a museum, and visitors can climb the lighthouse tower uh, and get an amazing view of the Atlantic, a 360 degree view of the Atlantic Ocean. And the light itself remains active and is maintained by the commissioners of Irish Lights. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, Lucianne Horvat is the project manager for the Valencia Island Development Company. I was very impressed by the beauty of uh, the whole island, the job they've done with the uh, exhibits at the light station, uh, just really did a, a beautiful job with everything. And uh, as soon as I met Lucianne, I actually got to ride in his car with him uh, some of that day. I knew he'd be a great guest for the podcast and I was, I was right. So I think people really enjoy this. Let's yeah. listen to that conversation now. I'm speaking today with Lucien Horvat, who is the project manager for the Valencia Island Development Company in Ireland. And I had the, the pleasure of uh, meeting you, Lucien, when I was there uh, not too long ago. Uh, let's see, we're talking in early September. I was there uh, in July and uh, actually uh, rode along with you to, uh, to Valencia Island Lighthouse, uh, which was a real pleasure. So thank you so much for joining me today, Lucien. I really appreciate it. Hello, Jeremy. Um, it was a pleasure to have you guys there, especially that um, the lighthouse um, is our main project, I suppose, on the island. And we're always happy to get visitors and especially the ones from your group, which are specific enthusiasts of, of the lighthouses around the world. Yes. And so um, it was even more so a pleasure because we were able to kind of speak the same language, if you want, in yeah. terms of lighthouses and their, yeah, you know, their meaning. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And, and just to clarify, this podcast, of course, is for the U.S. Lighthouse Society. And that was a U.S. Lighthouse Society tour group that day. There were about 30 of us. And we traveled for about 24 days around the Irish coast and saw an amazing amount of beautiful places. And certainly Valencia Island was one of the, the most spectacular. I'd say it's one of the most spectacular lighthouse locations I've ever visited. Uh, I know people have been to thousands of lighthouses. Only, I've only been to about 500, but it's uh, as far as the, the setting, it's right up at the top of my list. Uh, so before we get into talking about the lighthouse and a little bit more about Valencia Island itself, maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit about your personal background. Where are you from originally? How did you come to be the project manager for the Valencia Island Development Company? Uh, well, I, I come from Romania, specifically from Transylvania. So um, we're surrounded by mountains. The sea is about, I'd say, it's about 700 kilometers away from where I live. Mm -hmm. um, I moved to Ireland. I have um, a degree in uh, geography and tourism. I moved to Ireland in 2007 because uh, Ireland is one of the leading countries in, in tourism in Europe and why not in the world. Um, I worked in the hotel industry and then um, I volunteered to help the, uh, the Valencia Island Development Company um, with the signage at the lighthouse. So they had um, a little project to put in information boards around, you know, at the lighthouse. So I've done a lot of research about the island, about the history, about the lighthouse. And I instantly fell in love with the place and the location. And especially the history is absolutely amazing on Valencia Island. It's a bit, it's packed with, with, um, you know, places to see and historically valuable kind of um, places as well. Yeah. And um, I've done that uh, on a volunteer basis. And then in 2019, I went to an interview and I was employed as the lighthouse manager. And then as things evolved, I became now the project's development manager for the island. Um, the local, uh, it's, it's a local volunteer organization, nonprofit. It's called Valencia Island Development Company. And we have more projects we have the transatlantic cable station we have um, projects in terms of um, energy and other developments you know heritage and tourism so mm -hmm. this is just a brief history how <laughs> yeah. i got to be there yeah yeah i'm sure there's a, a lot more to the the story but uh yeah it's uh it's an absolutely an amazing place so we'll talk more about uh, the, uh, the the cable uh, transatlantic cable uh, museum that you've opened now. I want to talk about that in a few minutes, which we, you were nice enough to open for our, our tour group. It wasn't quite open to the public yet, but you opened it for us, which was fantastic. But let's talk some more about the, the lighthouse first. Uh, the lighthouse is actually on the grounds of an old fort, right? And it has been uh, known, I think maybe officially, at least in its early days, known as Cromwell Point Lighthouse. Could you explain a little bit about why that place is called Cromwell Point? Um, yeah, so this is a little bit debatable here in terms of history. Uh, yes, there is. a. So as a timeline, I will start a bit earlier in time. As you noticed at the lighthouse, we have a, a standing stone. It's a single standing stone. Yes. They're quite common in Ireland. Um, but they mark a very important place or a, a commemorate an important place, uh, person, or they act as, as landmarks, right? Mm -hmm. So as you've seen from the, the actual location of the lighthouse, it's the, the very entrance to Valencia Harbor. Um, that standing stone is there to kind of signal or welcome ships, you know, since very early days. Um, we're talking about the Bronze Age. I don't know if there were kind of sailors back then, but it's there. So that's the, the earliest indication of the place. Okay. Then in the 17th century, as a strategic point from the military point of view, and as we know, uh, Ireland was under the British Empire, uh, Cromwell's uh, army built a fort there in, in 1653. 
and you notice the when you enter the premises the the outline earthen banks of the fort and then the the, the actual stone fort where the the tower sits at the moment and there were cannons on display and all that in terms of the so and then continuing the timeline um the lighthouse was applied for in i think in 19 in 1835 by the local um knight of kerry who was the the landlord on the on the island and uh, th there was a need you know as aid to navigation as well and 19th century was the golden era of the lighthouses as we call it because a lot of them were built around that time yeah. and uh, the lighthouse was ready in 1941 and it's operating since um 18 sorry 1841 um there was a light keeper on the on the premises uh, looking after the lighthouse um until 1947 when the the, the lighthouse was automated mm -hmm. and then in 1960s 1963 electricity was introduced it was even more kind of automated it yeah. still functions today um the name of the place, um, you know, back in, you know, if we look at the names of places in Ireland, they they would have been back in the days, it would have been a lot of them uh, anglicized, let's call it this way, right? So the Irish original name uh, was kind of converted into an English name. So I don't know if it has to do with Cromwell. But um, the old name of the, the place is, is in Irish is uh, Crom Quill or something like that, right? I don't, I don't have a good uh, pronunciation, with, which means sloped woods, right? So you, you could see the slope hmm. there and going up the hill, right? Okay. So Crom Quill to Cromwell is very, you know, very close. Yeah. And um, since the lighthouse was built, it was called officially Cromwell Point Lighthouse. The official name today is still the same, Cromwell Point Lighthouse. Uh, we call it Valencia Lighthouse because of the wider kind of implication. Um, it's on Valencia Island. So I'd say the, the business name would be Valencia Island, but the, the official name is Cromwell Point Lighthouse. Okay. Yeah, that all makes sense. And by the way, talking about the uh, anglicizing of Irish names, uh, while I was in Ireland uh, in July in Dublin, I saw a play called Translations. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but that's the subject of that play. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. It was all about the, the politics of uh, the Anglic Anglicization of uh, a lot of the names and so forth. So uh, that's a, a subject that's uh, pretty huge in itself. It is, it is. And there's a lot, you know, I mean, you can see a lot of um, things like that across ireland you know yeah and just to mention you you mentioned before that you visited 500 lighthouses and uh, other people from your group uh, even more um every lighthouse has its own character right and its own charm it's there's something specific about each of them yeah um it may be the location it may be the history related to it it may be some stories related extraordinary stories related to the lightkeepers or um, even shipwrecks or something like that, you know, things that happen in the area. And um, of course, the Valencia Island Lighthouse, as you can see, it has a, a certain history to it. I mean, a certain kind of a different type of um, timeline, if you want, um, there, you know. And the location is, is very special as well because the views are spectacular. It's placed right out on the rocks. Very, you get very close and personal with the ocean because all you have to do is, is just reach out and you're you can put your hand in the water. You know, yeah. other lighthouses would would be at a different elevation, different. Uh, so, yeah. So look, <clears throat> I did like the fact that it's 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 on the top of your list. So that that <laughs> says a lot, you know. For yeah. a man that has seen over five hundred of them. Yeah. No, I said uh, while we were there that day, I said to some of the other people, and they would, I'm sure they would verify this. They might might remember that I said, uh, this I think is the most spectacular location of a lighthouse I've ever seen. Uh, and I've seen some other spectacular ones for sure, but this is Absolutely, amazing. Yeah. For those who are watching the video version of this podcast, they can see the the picture. Be I'm hiding. I'm in front of some of it, but they can see the uh, picture behind me. That kind of gives you an idea of uh, just how spectacular it is. So uh, the uh, just one more thing about the name Cromwell Point. I guess it's part would partly be uh, politics, uh, sort of 
uh, you know, relating to the, the whole history of Ireland and England, why people, local people might prefer to use the name Valencia Lighthouse rather than Cromwell. Is that, is that correct? Or? It's not as much, to be honest. I think those, that type of, um, I wouldn't call them politics. I would call them maybe bad memories, I suppose. You know? Yes. So I think they're, they're slowly fading away. I mean, history is history. We have to leave it behind. There's nothing we can do to change that. Right. Um, everything happened for a reason. Um, people on Valencia, they just call it the lighthouse, I suppose. It was always known as Cromwell Point Lighthouse officially. Mm -hmm. um, it's you see the the Cromwell Point Lighthouse as a name. It doesn't really have much significance for locals or for so. Right. You know, I, it's it's not a big subject to be honest with you. Um, yeah, people like to come down and relax. If there is, you would have some people, of course, and I've met a lot of visitors during the years. This is my fourth year um, there. So, but look, it's it's just part of the history, and and this is it. Like, there's nothing we can do. Yeah, yeah. Talking about the people uh, relaxing there, I was remembering when when our group was there. There was a woman, not part of our group, but a woman who seemed to be by herself, who had went way out on the rocks. Do you remember that at all? She was sitting at the I end do, of yeah, a yeah. point of rocks, which kind of scared us a little bit. It looked kind of precarious, but she did okay. But I certainly wouldn't have walked out there. But you must you get people would, going all over the place on the rocks. You would have um, more adventure, adventurous kind of people going doing that as well. But I mean, to be honest, you know, when we were children and you see something like, like that, it's kind of inviting, you know, for your... Yeah. So, you know, maybe some people have the same mindset, even if they're a bit older or mid age or whatever, yes. and they just take advantage, just go out on the rocks, go out and check things out, curiosity, you yeah. know, and yeah. the place has everything. I mean, you, you've seen the rocks are there, the, the, the geological formation, very clear, the sea is there, everything is just very, very, you get very, very, very close to, to nature and to everything that it has to offer, you know? Yeah, this is very true. So it was pretty crowded the day we were there. There were a lot of people. Do you have numbers? And as well, two part question, is this the site and the lighthouse open all year? And part two, do you have uh, an idea of how many people you get there? Yeah, so we are, we are not open all year. Mm hmm um <clears throat> we are trying to extend the season though okay because of the location um uh, and because the the, the lighthouse is so the, the site is so close to the elements uh we can't keep it open when it's very uh, stormy or very windy or you know you've probably noticed big rocks and boulders that are thrown in by the sea so uh, one thing from health and safety reasons, we wouldn't be able to keep it open all year round. Uh, second thing, we don't really have much visitors during the winter, so we would only have odd groups asking about the lighthouse. We can accommodate that, like, you know, yeah. um, and it doesn't pay off. Um, and then we're also struggling because the lighthouse is not self-sufficient, so we work with local um, partnerships and we get staff that are on social welfare schemes you know to put in their work experience or hours or community work and stuff like that it is working you know now in terms of numbers to become self-sufficient we would probably need um over i'd say 30 to thirty-five thousand visitors a year um when i started about four years ago we were on an upwards trend so when we first opened the lighthouse for the public in 2013, we had very little numbers like 2,000, 3,000, 6,000. And then from 2017, kind of it started to grow. And when I started, we had about, so in 2019, we had about 16,000. And before COVID in 2019, we were very close to 20,000. So we're kind of, getting there yeah. now this year unfortunately it, it looked busy but we didn't have as many uh, people because i don't know of the worldwide crisis that's happening at the moment so we are a little bit i'd say 
about 35 percent down compared to even last year and compared to 2019 so mm -hmm. in terms of vista numbers and you've, you've you've seen one of the problems we have is the adventurous road leading down to the lighthouse <laughs> right yes that's As a nice a way to driver, put it it's a bit uh, you know but it's part of the adventure so we will try to i mean we we have you know we're working with local authorities and we're trying to improve the infrastructure and all that but i mean we have the nice infrastructure around the lighthouse we have the, the huge car park there and it's kind of very very wide and the site is is big and you know people can relax and enjoy so yeah 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 uh since you brought up the subject i thought maybe uh we talked just a little bit more about the the road the access situation there i remember when we were leaving we uh we had a mini bus for our group but not everybody could fit on the mini bus so a few of us rode with you so i was riding with you but the mini bus was still down below trying to come up the road from the lighthouse i'm sure you're smiling you remember what i'm talking about i there do was a, yeah yeah <laughs> uh, uh, i think a, a couple a, a guy driving uh, i think there were tourists from somewhere uh who you you asked them to wait for the mini bus to come up because there wasn't room for them to pass on the road right but they went right down so they blocked the way and that ate up a, a lot of time to figure out how to how yeah to deal yeah. with that yeah so it is a, a limited road it's a rough road uh are there any plans for improving access there or what's what's happening with that well we we had minor improvements this year so some of the laybys were extended you know it's a very slow process um it's just the you know the local authorities the county plan there's other places around the, the around county carry that you know so look it's it's work in progress uh, we'll see we need to show numbers first we need to monitor we need to get i suppose um, a lot of data to demonstrate that it would be feasible to improve that road but you see on the other side i mean yes we are restricted in terms of uh, bosses coming down and big tours and things like that mm -hmm. that would be we would be delighted to host them but um maybe you see the fact that the road is a little bit adventurous and it's more suitable for small cars and families and um you know couples or it's just part of the the experience you know i think it all adds up because once you get past that road then the whole beauty is unveiling in front of you and yes. you can enjoy that you know so yeah the view be so you're not looking forward to go back up the road you know so. <laughs> yeah right the view behind me it was taken from the upper road there which is a great view i think it might have been taken while we were sitting there waiting for that that situation to be sorted out with the uh the driver did, going yeah down. i saw you with the camera yeah <laughs> yeah it took the took advantage and took a bunch of pictures at that time so uh let's talk more about the the experience of visitors there what uh what is there for people to experience uh one is the lighthouse open for climbing and two what's there as far as exhibits go so we recently uh got we received a grant okay from fault allen which is the irish tourism authority um it was european uh, money and we developed the interpretation at the lighthouse so it was a hundred about 120 000 euro investment mm -hmm. i'd say in dollars would be about 125 000 around that so um it's all new uh we like before this happened we had to develop a brief and have a vision of how to make the best out of what the the site has to offer you know um and how to create a, a story that kind of links and kind of is continued from the moment you you uh, uh, enter the gate and um, we talked about this earlier there's a lot of history uh we like we are we're telling bits because you see, one thing is that you cannot uh, overlap the experiences in a wider area. So if you have a museum that is talking about uh, one thing, then another visitor attraction shouldn't be developing on that idea, um, you know. Mm -hmm. But what we do, we have bits of information about the whole area. 
and then we can tell people if you want to know more about this particular subject you can go and visit that or you can go and visit that mm -hmm. so as you enter we we have bits of information about the early christianity and the skellig michael and the what happened in you know in the first uh, centuries on the island we of course, have information about the Cromwellian fort that was built there in, in the 17th century. People can see then the earthen banks and the defense line so they can understand what why they're there. We also have information about the standing stone and their purpose and um, you know how old they are. So that's the first part from the gate until you reach the, the dwelling house. We also have um, a viewpoint. We have a telescope. People can look out if it's nice and clear, you know, if it's clear weather. Mm -hmm. um, we have a panel there just to explain what people can see, you know, Beganish Island, um, which is the island behind you there. Uh, they can look up to the Slate Quarry, Valencia Slate, very famous, used in Westminster Palace in, in, in England and Opera House in Paris. Um, we have those tetrapod footprints, so we, we have explanation about them, uh, 365 million years old fossilized footprints. Um, so all this information is available to people, so they know where they are and what was the timeline and why is the place like it is and what the place buries with it, like, you know. Yeah. And then they head on to the, the next stage. Uh, which is the the dwelling house. So that's all about the light keepers and the families. And you've seen the house. We've done it like somebody still lives there, the light keeper. We have those eggs and breakfast on the table downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, the furniture is done kind of 19th century style. We've redone the light keeper's bedroom upstairs, the children's bedroom. But we have new things and uh, modern things as well. We have those um uh, digital frames with light keepers videos with um uh, former light keepers and interviews where they tell really um true and interesting story about their their service yes um we also have that animated light keeper that is kind of uh, connecting the dwelling house with the tower right there's a story they're connecting and um, other things like in the Lightkeeper workshop upstairs, we've, uh, we have one of the Marconi radios that were used um, to communicate, you know, uh, in the lighthouse, the Irish lights. Um, a little bit about the Carnegie Library, what they were doing in their downtime, reading books, how they were sharing those books between different lighthouses and they had that box and yep. they were exchanging books. Um, we have a little uh, Morse code where people can practice because of the history of Valencia with the transatlantic cable. So moving on then to towards the tower, then you enter the actual stone part of the fort, which is very well preserved, as you, you've seen. And um, we still have that powder room, you know, which is different structure to the left where you kind of mind your head when you go in there. Um, it's a vaulted room. Uh, so We've done a little bit of interpretation there about, um, you know, the, the cannon and the military kind of um, side of it. And then in the right, on the right hand side, we have that old um, um, generator room, the, the, the engine room that was serving the lighthouse, um, you know. And we've added the eco kind of uh, interpretation to it just to raise awareness about our seas and the importance of um, of the seas and the the wildlife and uh, plants and everything to our planet, you know. So I think it's important to have that everywhere you go, just to keep reminding people how important it, it is to keep keep um, our planet clean, you know, mm -hmm. for our future. So then you you just go um, uh, to uh, towards the tower. You can go up the the stairs. There are forty two granite steps up the balcony. On the, the entrance, we have that second part of the Lightkeeper avatar on the screen telling a story. And he's a bit jolly and kind of joking and not joking. And, you know, uh, people love that as well. Um, and then, of course, the, the, the 
cherry on top is the the balcony where you have just those breathtaking views of everything from the balcony you know yeah um there's also a, a little platform behind the tower just overlooking the the fort's wall and uh, there is one um big cannon that's one of the original cannons that is there since 1650s mm-hmm. and we have it displayed on the top of the wall so this yeah. is kind of a walkthrough of what you can see, you know? Yeah, yeah. And the... There is a lot more. There are stories related. There is, um, you know, pictures, information about the families, about the hardship of the light keepers, about their job, about their children, how they used to go to school, what they, you know, all that. So, yeah. I mean, people can spend an easy one hour just, you know, just going through these things, you know, they could spend more as well. Yeah. And also not to forget the lovely coffee shop we have in that remote area uh, where people can just sit down and just have a cup of coffee and overlooking the, the whole Valencia Harbor, you know, from yeah. there. So, yeah. 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 It just reminded me uh, the last thing you said, I was going to ask you about that, the coffee house or tea room, whatever, whatever it's called. Um we were at another lighthouse site on our trip, and I won't say which one. There, a lot of them are spectacular, but at this southern one, they had a, a, a small uh, restaurant or tea room, and they had a sign saying the most scenic tea room in Ireland. And I would uh, beg to differ with with, with that. <laughs> I think I, to me, yours yours wins the prize. The other one was really scenic too, but. Thank but, you very yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, when people go onto the, the balcony or catwalk near the to- top of the lighthouse, um, they can see the lens in the lighthouse. You mentioned before it's it's an act, still an act of aid to navigation, still an act of light. It's more like a harbor light, if you want, right? So it's not one of those rotating big right. lights that um, yeah. with the lens, you know. There is a part-time... Um, lightkeeper i think attendant that comes down every i'd say once a month just to check everything is in order and you see it's uh when at dusk when it when the light comes on automatically we are closed you know we close around six o'clock um, during the season so um it's getting dark around i'd say 10 o'clock so they won't get to see the light much the locals are seeing the light though you know there you see the light yeah. every every night yeah so, uh, i imagine you've gotten to be there at sunset and uh, after dark at times uh, which has to be a treat oh right? it is yeah we we yeah. had actually two years ago we had um, an event there with the irish national opera okay mm. and they launched an opera called uh, the lighthouse so they chose a few um venues lighthouses on the coast of ireland where they uh, did this as a premiere okay yeah so the setup was a huge screen <clears throat> excuse me in the um, the smaller car park before the lighthouse you remember that area there past the the yellow boy that you can see in the picture behind you yeah and we set up uh, chairs there and there was a huge screen and it was done during the night, around 10.30 at night, you know, so it was pitch dark. It was only the light from the the tower of the lighthouse and the projection on the screen. So I can tell you it was like, it was absolutely fabulous. And they were very lucky because we got a very clear um, night as well. And I don't know if you know, but um, uh, Southwest... Uh, the southwest uh, tip of Ivra Peninsula, where we are located, is in the gold tier dark skies reserve. It has that gold tier dark skies, right? Uh, dark skies, I don't know if you're familiar, means that you can actually see the galaxies clear because there's no light pollution from towns mm-hmm. or cities. Or So that particular night with the Irish National Opera had it all. You know, you could see in the, the clear um, open sky, you know, um the pulsating light from the lighthouse and the projection with with the the opera you know on the on the screen so it was absolutely fabulous yeah so yeah nights or evenings when it's dark it, it does have a little a specific kind of uh charm you know and yeah. then you realize where you are you know and it's dark and you're there and kind of gives you the feeling on how, how the light keepers stay there every night you know mm-hmm. 
and the families with them, you know, later on when the, the house was built. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's special, you know, it's, it's different. It, yeah. I always feel it's really special being in a lighthouse uh, after dark. Um, you mentioned the the opera, the lighthouse. Isn't that based on the the story of the the lighthouse in Scotland, where the three keepers disappeared mysteriously? Is that what that's based on? I think it had that that theme, yeah. Um, yeah. And they were trying to figure out what happened. Yeah. Um, so the, I think that's the exact one, yeah, with the, with the yeah. three keepers, yeah. The Flannery and Isles, yeah. It's, it it's was a... glimpses from their life and what they did and their connections and their love life, and each of them had different problems and. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's and been... you see these these theme um jeremy now you you probably seen the movies as well you know about the light keepers and it has this um um how would you call it um i don't say a theme but um a light mo motive right called <laughs> let's call it this way where they have mental problems they have to be very strong mentally you know mm -hmm. And it all happens when they that breaks when when they kind of <laughs> you know let go. So it all all kind of uh, strange thing happen. And if you think back, like I mean, you've probably seen pictures of, and I'm sure you have in US these very remote on little islands lighthouses. You know, we have Fastnet, which is the most popular in um, in Ireland. But I mean, to be there during the night during a storm, um, or during I don't know a storm the last a week you know and not being able to go back when you were supposed to go and your term kind of goes from a week to two or three weeks then you have to be stationed because of the elements it's it must be really really tough you need to be very very strong mentally you know to yes to deal with that so this is you know it's it's very interesting if you look into it more in depth you know yeah and we do have those interviews at the lighthouse upstairs with uh, with uh, former lightkeepers that tell their stories. They actually lived it, you know. Yes. So, and it's it's a bit funny to see them talking about those times, so detached and so kind of they they kind of look like they actually miss those times, you know, to some extent. Like, <laughs> I think they do. You know, even though it was difficult and dangerous, most of them found a lot to to love about it as well. So, most of them. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it was part of them. At some, it became a part of them. You know, it became yes. part of normal. You know, that's an excellent way to put it. And I, I did want to uh, mention that you talked about all the displays and everything, and it's all so well done. Uh, the signage is attractive and clear and concise, and the the video interviews and everything. I, I was I was very impressed. Uh, so, uh, you know, you guys have done a, a great job there. With yeah, we, we did our best to, mm -hmm. like I said, you know, to make the most out of those money that came in, you know, mm -hmm. and um, we wanted to create a story and we wanted to add the human touch to the experience more than everything else, you know, just to stand out and actually, uh, you know, people would leave with feeling that they've actually connected to the, the families that were there, to the way of life of the light keepers, you know. Mm -hmm. And we have those evocative pictures as well, old pictures on the walls showing them how they were climbing a rope or, do you know what I mean? Just to give the people that. Um, yeah, so look, it was, a you know, we, start, we did a brief before just our vision about that. And then we tweaked bits and pieces and we worked with... Uh, the company that implemented that, by the way, Mirador Media, they're called. And they were fantastic because they would always, we would have always have these brainstorms. So nothing was set in stone, you know, when we started Interpreter. So we kind of modified and tweaked bits and pieces. So we got to this um, end result, like, you know. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't say end result because we're continuously developing. I have other projects uh, in mind to continue the development there. Um, I've recently added uh, in the engine room um, kind of a, a screen there with it's called a video sound trail. So we have some nice videos now that was were produced by um, or they were commissioned by uh, Valencia Chamber Music. Valencia Chamber Music on Valencia, they have this um, festival every year, you know, so it's a cultural event. 
So now they commissioned these videos about the lighthouse, about the standing stone, and about two other attractions on the island. And they're absolutely fabulous. You know, one of them is a, a poem with a, a musical background. So I hope you get to see that, uh, Jeremy, if you're coming back to Valencia, you know. <laughs> I hope I can come back. That, that sounds, sounds great. And we I also would... want to develop yeah. the area in the fort area. Mm -hmm. So before that, we're... I explained to you guys that uh, the lightkeepers would have had uh, maybe goats or mules or, you know. So we want to develop that little lightkeeper garden there and repair the derelict buildings across, you know, uh, attached to the wall and maybe do a bit of interpretation about their farming activities, you know, mm -hmm. around the lighthouse. So yeah. that's another project I have in mind. So it's still ongoing. There's always more you can do, you know. Sure. Uh, we don't have time to talk about all the attractions on Valencia Island, and there are quite a few, as you mentioned earlier, but uh, there's a heritage, heritage, I have trouble saying the word heritage, heritage, the Valencia Heritage Center, I believe, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so Valencia Heritage Center is based in the old school, um, you know, that was on near in Knightstown, and they've, I mean, I have to give it to them. There, there's a, you know, a committee there, um, some ladies that are looking after that, and they've amassed an impressive amount of information and artifacts and, um, you know, documents and things like that. So there's a lot to see in the heritage center. Now, before we opened the cable station museum, that was the place to go where you would learn about the the eighth wonder of the world, as we call it, the transatlantic cable. And they still have, you know, a lot of it in the heritage center. We've launched the, <clears throat> the, the transatlantic cable museum uh, in the original building, um, which by the way, um, when were you down in, in June or July? It was July. It was, it was shortly July. before you were about to open the museum, I believe. Yeah. Them. Like a week so or we, two or something? We made it to, um, we kind of made it through on the, the tentative list for UNESCO nomination, for UNESCO accreditation yes. with the uh, credit, with the um, cable station in Valencia. And we are working very closely with our sister cable station in Newfoundland in Canada, which, so that was the first connection back in 1860s, right? In 1866, I think it was, they, they finally managed to have a stable connection was from Valencia Island to Newfoundland in Canada. So we're both now applying for UNESCO. So is mm -hmm. that, um, you know, for under the industrial heritage. Um, so yes, there is a lot on the island, you know, um, a lot. Of, we have those tetrapod footprints just um, walking distance within from the lighthouse. They're 365 million years old. And there's only four places in the world in coastal areas where you can see those uh, tracks so clearly, you know, those mm -hmm. fossils. Very important. Um, we have a lot of important things from early Christianity. We have, it's called St. Brendan's Well, uh, just mm -hmm. up on the other side of the island. Uh, very, it's a lovely story, you know, attached to it. Um, we have an Altazamut stone that was used for navigation as well. Um, and it was kind of linked to an Altazimut stone in the Ural uh, mountains in, in Russia, you know, in, just to, to have the, I think, the, the latitude, correct? Yeah. Um, a lot of things. Like you said, we don't have time to kind of cover everything, you know. Yeah. You but, have the, um, uh, Glen, is it pronounced Glenlium House and Gardens? Glen, Glenlium House and Gardens, yeah, because yeah. of the on the southwest tip of Ireland, there's a lot of influence from the Gulf Stream. So the vegetation kind of slightly changes towards tropical. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a garden as you come from Killarney on the Ring of Kerry, it's called Kells, um, Kells Bay. So Kells Gardens, tropical gardens. And Glanium was the actual uh, residence of the Knight, Knight of Kerry. They were landlords of the, on the island for many, many years. There was a dynasty, the, the Fitzgeralds, and they used to live there. So, and they they um, helped the economy a lot on the island, you know. And they actually worked with um, 
with the um, Cyrus Field for the transatlantic cable um, as well, you know. And you've you've noticed the 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 Celtic cross people have on the top of the hill there to honor the Knights of Kerry. So Glenlium is a fantastic um, spot as well, and lovely mm -hmm. gardens there. So they're just just a short walk from the lighthouse. Yeah, I, I certainly hope I can get back to this. You so want much, we so can I can I don't if you want to speak about an hour about <laughs> the, what yeah. else we can see on the island, yeah. I wouldn't be able to cover everything. <laughs> right, so much history and so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, for an area that's not not really that big, it's uh, it's one of the most uh, interesting, one of the most beautiful and historic places I've I've been. So it's, it's, it's very amazing. dense history on a small area, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we can uh, uh, kind of wind things down here, but I want to ask you, uh, are there any plans you mentioned that it's always, there's always more you can do with interpretation and that kind of thing? Are, uh, the buildings themselves seem to be in good shape. I'm sure you, there's been restoration done in recent years. And is there more of that sort of thing coming up? Anything that's uh, any major projects that are needed at this point? It's funny you mentioned because I was just dealing with that today. Mm -hmm. um, I've applied for uh, funding, it's called the LEADER program, it's European uh, funds as well, and they go into rehabilitation of uh, heritage um, sites and stuff like that, so I'm going to change all the, the doors and the windows in the dwelling house because they are old, you know, they, the, the elements are really, really kind of, it's very exposed to rain and wind and storms there, so I'm going to change that. That's going to happen. I'm going to change the doors uh, probably this month. And I'm going to change all the windows. I'm going to put teak windows. But of course, with the same um, uh, same style, because it's a listed building. So it's a heritage building. So um, it has to be the same uh, architecture. We can't change that. Yeah. Quite expensive, you know. But they will be teak um, windows and doors. So they will last probably for hopefully a number of years, you know. Yeah. Um, in terms of the tower, uh, we can't do that's that's uh, Irish lights. So they deal with the tower. They recently painted it. I think it's in good shape. I mean, as you know, they were all built, most of them from, you know, granite. So they'll be there for all they need is a, like the Irish people say, a lick of paint, you know, that's all <laughs> they need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK, I wasn't sure how that separation I know in this country, in the U.S., a lot of lighthouses are still, you know, activates navigation and the Coast Guard still takes care of the lights. And in some cases, they stay in control of the, the lantern room, the you know, the, where the light is situated. But the towers themselves are generally cared for by other organizations. Oh, okay. But in, in your case, the Commissioners of Irish Lights still cares for the, the light, the entire they lighthouse do that, tower. Yes, yeah. yeah. There are very funny stories we are working with irish lights and we are part of a group called the great lights of ireland okay yep. and you've seen our you've seen our sister lighthouses hook i think you visited one of them we did um, um we visited Luke a few Head, i don't know yes we did go there too yeah so there are very you see we are working with irish lights through this project they they have the great lives of ireland to access the archives but when, when it comes to people um, doing maintenance for the lighthouse and painters and things like that, and if you access reports and the, the principal keepers would complain about the painters that they, wouldn't, they, they weren't doing anything all day and all that. You see, these stories, they, we need to bring them up and have them documented and show them to people because they're, they're very funny, you know, and some of them. And some of them are very, you know, they tell you about how disciplined they they were and how they wanted everything to be a speak and span, you know, and everything to be white and everything to be clean. And, you know, it was like a military organization, if you want, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's very interesting. Um, yes, you see, the, the commissioners of Irish Lights, they still look after all the towers. And as we are leasing from them, then we look after the other part and it's part of the agreement um, you yeah. know, with them. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for, for clarifying that for me. So I have one final question for you. Okay. I'm, I feel like we could talk for, for hours. There's a lot to talk about with the lighthouse and with the island, but I have one final question for you for bonus points. Okay. 
Uh, what have you personally enjoyed most about your association? I'll, I'll, I'll say for with both the lighthouse and Valencia Island in general, what, what have been the most enjoyable parts for you? If I have to pinpoint exactly the, the most enjoyable part was when we had to implement the, the lighthouse project. And um, from an initial meeting where we sat down with the lighthouse committee, which part of them are just locals, volunteers, you know. Actually, all of them are volunteers, but part of them are not even part of the Valencia Island Development Company. They're just volunteers in the Lighthouse Committee. So when we walked the premises and we just looked at it and we sat down and we started to get the pen and a piece of paper and say, okay, well, what can we do at the gate? What can we do on the road? What can we do there? What can we do there, there, there? So we put together a brief, you know, and we had in our mind a kind of a you know an image of how the lighthouse would look after we we do this re this interpretation project you know and then from that to seeing it actually happen and to see it done and launched it i think that was very very um rewarding you know yeah it was actually really really re rewarding and you could actually see your vision came to life and all that and what's also i'd say the most rewarding is when you see people um leaving the premises with a smile on their face and you ask them how did you find it and they all say oh it was fabulous it was fantastic um so that's really really i think the most enjoyable thing that i found for myself you know so far uh -huh. yeah <laughs> the island yeah yeah, I completely understand. And I, I think you saw a lot of smiles on the faces of the group I was with, the U.S. Lighthouse Society Tour. Absolutely, yeah. And people I was were, delighted to see that, yeah. Yeah, people loved it. And, uh, and again, I, I got a badge from you guys as well. I still have it yeah, here. A patch. An and official I tour thought patch. that was a, a bonus point, you know. I, I thought they don't give badges to anybody. <laughs> no, we, we don't. We don't. I hope you <laughs> hope you display it proudly. Yeah, you got the official tour patch. Uh, so, uh, Lucien Horvat, it's, it's great talking with you. It was a, a highlight of my nearly 40 years of visiting lighthouses to visit Valencia Island Lighthouse. It's uh, just an absolutely fabulous place. And I, I would say any lighthouse buffs visiting Ireland absolutely have to put it at the top of the list. I would say uh, right up there with Fastnet. You mentioned Fastnet. That's a pretty amazing place, too. But you have a, a, a great place there. And uh, the, the island in general is, as you said, uh, tremendous history and just the scenic beauty is unparalleled, I would say. So, Lucien Horvat, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I, I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you very much, Jeremy. And uh, look, I hope, you know, people are invited to come and visit us. I hope things will get better in terms of traveling and they already are. And um, why not? I hope to see you guys back, you know, um, at some stage. I know there's a lot of other thousands of lighthouses to be to visit, but you never know when you, you come back to Ireland, you know. So, um, and um, look, Let's keep in touch. Um, if you need anything, you know, from our side, um, by all means, just get in touch and we'll be happy to, to keep in touch because you're part of the family, as they say, you know. You can read more about the Valencia Island Lighthouse at valencialighthouse.ie. That's V-A-L-E-N-T-I-A lighthouse.ie. Uh, you can book your tours in advance through their website as well. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of Ireland, Jeff, do you have an appropriate quote for this uh, episode, perhaps? Well, interestingly enough, I have one right here. Really? Uh, as you, here's the quote, as you ramble through life, whatever be your goal, keep your eye upon the donut and not upon the hole. <laughs> Very. Good. I think that's what goes under the heading of a, a an old Irish saying, <laughs> something. I don't know how old. I don't know how old the the term donut goes. But anyway, it's it's a good one. So as always, to our regular listeners and our new ones, thank you so much for listening and keep a good light. Let it shine.
Everywhere.